Welcome to Savoir Labs, I'm Jamie Goodger. Today we're gonna to use Kimu to emulate a S390X processor, install Ubuntu 2204, and then get Apache Craft running on top of all of this. Up next. <music> Okay, let's get into this. All of the notes and details for our lab are up on Savoir's GitHub blog. Uh, you'll find a link for this page on the show notes below. So let's start off by talking about what it is we're attempting to do, and then we're going to switch between these instructions and our terminal and back and forth. So what is Kimu? Kimu is an emulator. It allows us to emulate the instruction set architecture of a target CPU and run it on a different one. So in our case, we are running a x86-64 AMD system, and we are going to make it think that we are running a S390X. This is a different instruction architecture. It is effectively gonna think it's an IBM Z uh, 15th gen edition CPU. So we're going from a little Eddian to a big Eddian system and a completely different instruction set architecture. So why would we want to do this? Well, it's fun, it's nerdy, and it's stuff that we'd like to get to in this lab. So let's take a look at the prerequisites and then we'll head on over to our Ubuntu host system and we'll start checking these things through and doing all the actions. So our first thing we need to do is get our prerequisites. We want to make sure we get the latest versions of our packages and we need to have Kimu system S390X and cloud images util installed. Here on a terminal, we can now begin running these instructions. So we'll start with the sudo apt update to make sure we have the latest set of, an, of packages and we see we're already updated. And then we're gonna do sudo apt install of our Kimu system S390X. And we also want our cloud image utils. Okay, these have already been installed locally, uh, but effectively if they weren't here, you'd see it go out and pick up all of the packages and install it to your local disk. The important parts here, the Kimu system. So I'm just gonna run the command here so you can see Kimu itself set up, uh, system S390. We can pass along to it uh, various questions and it will start feeding back to us information about uh, what Kimu for S390 X can do. So it's going to tell us effectively what things it support. And obviously there's lots of flags and lots of capabilities that it has here. The important part here that I like to show is where it says uh, what versions of the CPU it supports. And later on, we're going to see, we're going to run the most latest version it understands, which will in this case be a gen 15 version here. So that's as many instructions as it tries to emulate. As to the cloud utils, that is the capability for it to use a cloud image. And we're gonna use uh, some of those commands to help build a cloud ISO. And we'll see that in a future step. Let's go back to instructions and then we'll be right back to the terminal. Okay, we have the base prerequisites in place. We're now gonna to want to download the Ubuntu 2204 S390X cloud image. We provide for you here the wget command, and this image is gonna take as long as your internet connection uh, speed to be able to download it. We already have that done on a local terminal, so I'm gonna move on to step two, so we don't have to watch that full download. Once we have that ISO downloaded, we are gonna to want to create a directory to hold our YAML files. The YAML files we're gonna have are for our user data and our metadata that the cloud system will use to uh, instantiate our instance of the Ubuntu VM. So once we create a directory to hold it, we're gonna first create our user data file. And inside of it, this is just pure YAML, we're gonna have our host name. So uh, the default we're gonna use here for this is gonna be Ubuntu S390X. And then we're gonna set up a user who will be able to SSH in to be able to use the system to uh, build out and add in Java, make craft, etc. Uh, generally, I'm just putting in here that the name we're going to use is Ubuntu, but I use my own name, so just J Goodyear is my username. We're going to use an SSH public key from your host system. The reason we're doing this is so you can just directly SSH into it from your terminal. Uh, given that that is a secure value, I don't want to uh, you know, be posting those, but this is from a testing system I have, so I can just freely put it on my own system. Generally, you never share uh, any of this kind of information out there, so just bear with me for that part there. 
Uh, and we configure the sudo group and we want to set our bash shell. In the metadata file that we'll create, we are gonna give it an instance name to our virtual machine and a local host name. Uh, we wanna make sure those host name in both files match. Uh, and then we can create our cloud ISO. That is gonna be that file that we'll use to be able to boot up this virtual machine. Once we have that created, we'll be able to move on to running Kimu. So let's go back to our terminal and set all of this up. We already have our cloud image downloaded. Uh, it was a relatively large download. I believe it was about three and a half gigabytes. We have also created our cloud and net folder. So let's take a look inside of what we have here. There are two YAML files that we created. Uh, we can name them just as so. We don't have to put the .yaml on it. The metadata contained our instance ID and our local host name. As to our uh, user data, and keep in mind this is a pub key that I have that's throwaway, uh, I've created the Ubuntu S390X, I created a user named Jay Goodyear, I created an authorized key, and then I added in the sudo and shell that we'd be able to use. With that all that created, we can then run the cloud utils command to build our ISO. So uh, let me just put this on a little higher up screen so you can all see it. The cloud locals uh, command cloud init ISO made from the cloud init user data and cloud init metadata. What this created was our cloud init ISO. This file is what the system is going to use to be able to uh, have something for Ubuntu to talk to, to configure itself while it's setting itself up as an OS. This step actually takes quite a bit of time, not the actual creation of the ISO, but it, when we run Kimu to run the installation setup of Ubuntu, this is where it comes in and has to set up a whole OS and builds out. It takes quite a few minutes. Okay, let's get to the fun step. We're gonna launch Kimu for S390X and we're gonna pass to it a collection of parameters that will actually set it up to run our operating system using the values we get from that cloud init file and extra parameters to say, this is the size of the virtual machine we want and how we want it to operate. So let's get back to the terminal. All right, let's take a look at this command. We're gonna run the Kimu system S390X command. So that's the one we ran a little earlier to find out uh, just what CPU support it has. And we're gonna pass in the following flags. You can get more details on our blog, but sufficient to say we're telling it we want to use about 10 gigabytes of memory as the RAM for the virtual machine. We're going to use the latest generation of CPU for the S390X that Kimu supports. In our case, it's going to be about a Z15. Uh, we set 16 cores for SMP, so the virtual machine is going to think it has 16 cores to use. We set up a set of drive files. So the first drive file is the Ubuntu 2204 cloud server cloud image uh, that we have for the S390X. The second file is the CloudInet ISO. So effectively, this is just saying for the virtual machine uh, setup, it knows where to look for the image. That's our operating system. So that's the operating system uh, plus the user space for us to be able to download things. And the init that tells it how to set up this ISO. We turn off graphics. This is gonna be done completely via the terminal. And then we set up two more parts here. One is the network device. So this is where we're gonna do the host forwarding. The host port 2222 is going to be mapped to the virtual machines port 22. So when I SSH in, I'll SSH to my local port 2222, and then that will go directly over to the virtual machines 22 port. The final piece here is setting up vert IO. And this is just adding in extra devices that the virtual machine needs for execution. So we'll fire this one off and start up the virtual machine. Now the first boot of this takes a lot longer. I've already started this virtual machine and because it's using an image, it will persist uh, the values. So this boot will be a lot faster than your initial one. Your first one, it took on this system about two and a half, three minutes to boot. Uh, this host machine is an AMD no, Ryzen 9 9950X, so that's uh, 16 cores, 32 threads, reasonably beefy uh, AMD 5 based system. 
even on this system though, it does take quite a few resources for it to boot up. Uh, you can see that from a running terminal showing how much of the CPU is being used to run this emulation. Uh, but it gets there pretty quickly. Uh, once we get to the login phase here, we'll be able to go over to a different terminal window and I can do a direct SSH now to my local host. So this is another terminal on my AMD box to port 2222. And now I should be able to confirm that the machine is up and running. And now we are logged in. So let's just take a look what's been printed to the screen. We went on port 2222 on our local host, and now we are connected to our Ubuntu 2204.5 LTS system. And we can see a couple of pieces of information here. Uh, we already can tell that most of the uh, disk image space that we have has been used. You'll notice here we got four gigs instead of 2.2. You'll see on the blog the command you need to use to resize your image to give yourself a little extra disk space. Uh, we can see that the machine itself thinks it's now on a 10.0 based network instead of our regular 192.168. And now we're into the system. Let's see what happens when I do an LS CPU command. Here we go. The system has reported back to us that it believes it's a S390X. 32-64-bit with big Eddian support, 16 CPUs, and we can see the machine type is a 8561, which is analogous over to a C15 based system. Uh, we can see a bunch of different flags for what's supported by the CPU and how it believe it is set up. I think we are now ready to go install Java Maven and then go get Apache Craft. So since I've already been on the system, I've actually installed a couple of extra pieces in here. Uh, in my X1 folder, we'll see that I've installed or downloaded and then extracted and installed the Apache Maven 399. And we also have a JDK 21. I picked it up one from Eclipse Adoptium and the other one from IBM Semaru Community Edition. Uh, I'm going to use the Timurin Edition for this demo. So I will source my X1 folder, set up JDK 1. And that will now provide to my environment, my Maven home and my Java installation. Uh, since people have asked me before how I set up things for just quick setting things up when I'm switching JDKs and Maven versions, uh, sometimes I'll just write a little shell script. In this case, it looks kind of like this where I pass in some Maven options. I set my Maven home, my Java home, and then update my path to include the Maven home, Java home, and the path values and just export it to the system. Once it's there, I now have it available to me. If I go over to my X2 folder, I have a test folder where I have downloaded an Apache Craft kit. Uh, if you look on the blog, that is, uh, I think around step five, where we go out and just go to Apache Craft to get a download. I have a copy of Craft 4.4.7. I've already extracted the kit to make it available. And now when I go in here, we'll be able to see the craft kit has been extracted. We can go to the bin folder. We can confirm we have our Maven home all set up with our Java. And let's run the craft command and start up the kit. This will take a few moments now. And keep in mind, this is all emulated. So those CPUs are going to be running a lot harder than normal to be able to start up a craft. And here we go, we are to the console. We can now uh, run our normal commands to be able to see what's happening inside the kit and what's been installed. We can run our info command and take a look and see what craft is running. We can see our 447 craft where it's been installed to. We can see our open JDK has been set up version 21 from Eclipse Adoptium. And then we can get down and see what GC it's using and the platform of S390X. So it's up and running and now we can start playing around with this system. Awesome sauce. Well, I think we've hit now uh, what we were trying to show you in this particular video. So thank you so much for joining us today. Please remember to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. We'll see you on the next video. Cheers.